Ready? Yo, this is Little Mama, a.k.a. the voice of the young people. Today's artist is not exactly a one-hit wonder. Her songs were never really big enough to class her in that category, but still, she dropped one album before dropping off entirely. Most well known for her gold certified rap single Lip Gloss in 2007, after her instant one off success, she dropped several more singles before calling it a day and switching careers in 2011. For someone so young, people seem to gravitate towards her music. However, today not that many people are checking for her music. So the question is what happened to Little Mama? Let's break it down. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Little Mama was born around 1989 in Brooklyn, New York. Raised as the eldest of eight children, Little Mama got her nickname early on because she helped take care of her younger siblings. Her parents separated when she was very young, and although she remained close to her father and visited him constantly, this was just the beginning of her troubles. By the beginning of kindergarten, her family moved to Harlem with her mother, where they were quickly overcome by poverty and became homeless. During their time homeless, Little Mama was exposed to the tough life on the streets, including drug violence, teen pregnancy, gangs, domestic violence, and of course their own poverty. To help out, she took up small jobs like baking and began to express herself artistically through dance, poetry, and music. She trained at ballet, jazz, South African dance, hip hop and street dance and eventually branched into drama, taking classes at a local school. Because she was a poet, it was easy to transition into rapping. But around the time she was in grade 8, her family moved back to Brooklyn where they finally got an apartment. Things were starting to look up for the family. But like many things in Little Mama's life, it was short lived. By around 2004, her mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. She didn't look sick. She didn't act sick. She still had her energy and smile and was always loving and sensitive. Despite having a tough time growing up, Little Mama was always focused on her art and she landed a guest spot on the 2005 show The Drop. Alan Brunner, who was a musician in his own right, noticed her natural talent. He then brought her to the studio where she recorded her first song and that's where the music bug bit her. I've been rapping for a long time. Um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Since I was about 10, 11 years old. So when I realized this is what I wanted to do is when it went from a hobby to a career, like two, three years into it, I was like, yo, this is something I want to do. I knew I didn't want to work a nine to five early. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I'm like, yo, I'm not going to be able to work behind a desk and do this and that and that. I was going between psychology and entertainment because I, I always took dance for fun. I always sing around the house for fun. And I wrote music and went into the studio and it was fun but it's also a career. So that's where I knew that that's my place in life. When she was just 17 years old, she moved from Brooklyn to Atlanta to work with producer James Groove Chambers around 2006. They recorded seven songs together, one of which was her breakout single, Lip Gloss. The demo finally caught the attention of Jive and Little Mama was quickly signed to the label. By around 2007, she dropped her first single, Lip Gloss. The song is notable for being percussive and having no real melody. It's essentially just a beat she raps over. However, the song was a banger. The song eventually went gold and introduced a new genre of rap called hip hop. Little Mama then dropped other songs like G Slide, Shot It Get Loose, and What It Is. You can show me how to G Slide. Hey, 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 However, none of them compare to Lip Gloss. Because Lip Gloss was such a huge hit, she departed on the up close and personal tour with Chris Brown, Soldier Boy, and Sean Kingston. That's when Little Mama's mother took another major hit. The cancer came back and it spread throughout her body. I watched my mom go through operations on her brain. She was in pain and she started losing her hair and dropping weight. That's when it became real to me. While I was on the up close and personal tour with Chris Brown, Sean Kingston and Soldier Boy in 2007, I would go to my grandmother's house to see my mother. When I visited her on her birthday in December of that year, she was in bed. She looked at me but didn't say a word. She didn't have the strength. I thought, wow, my mother is dying. And that's the point where I found clarity. 
I knew she was going to pass on. Six days later, she did. She died after I went back out on the road. My dad, who accompanied me when I traveled, pulled me to the side during our stop in Atlanta and told me. I couldn't feel. I couldn't cry. I was in a daze. It was a shocking moment. After this, little mama drowned herself in her work. She released the third single from her album called Shorty Get Loose with Chris Brown and T Pain around 2008, and it was a smash success. The song eventually went gold and became the true peak of her career. Her debut album, VYP, Voice of the Young People, was released around 2008 to lukewarm success. However, despite Little Mama's lukewarm reception, she always hustled hard. By doing so, she became a judge on America's Best Dance Crew, a position she held for several seasons until around 2012. From 2009 onwards, Little Mama's rap career became messy, hard to follow, and overall just marked the official decline in her career. She re-released her official single called Life that year, which had previously appeared on her VYP album, but this time there was a video attached to it. Soon after this, Little Mama announced the title for her next album to be titled Voice of the Young People, I Am That. They said they pushing my album, but now <laughs> the album is going to be dropping sometime this year. We don't have a date for it, but the name of the album is Voice of the Young People, VYP. But shortly afterwards, she made a huge mistake. During the 2009 VMA show, which nowadays is known for Kanye West climbing on stage in the middle of Taylor Swift's acceptance speech, there was another social blunder committed that night by one Miss Little Mama. When Jay-Z and Alicia Keys were on stage performing Empire State of Mind, Little Mama decided to hop on stage and pose with the megastars. In all honesty, this has to be one of the cringiest moments in TV history. Before Little Mama got on stage, she tried to grab Beyonce's hand and get her to come on stage as well. But Beyonce, realizing what Little Mama was trying to do, tried to grab her hand and pull her back. But Little Mama was not having it and jumped on stage anyway. While Little Mama was on stage, she tried to vibe with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. She seemed extremely happy to be there except for the fact that Jay-Z and Alicia Keys were like, why are you here? Jay-Z and Alicia Keys then completely ignored Little Mama and this made the situation even more cringy. The whole bit went viral and a mortified Little Mama apologized for the whole debacle during an MTV News interval. Smile for anybody, I, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful and I was like feeling it and it just happened at a moment where it was the VMAs. Numerous times she has admitted that she has no idea why she jumped on stage. According to her she was carried away and inspired. As I'm walking I stop and I'm like come on come on let's go to Beyonce and she's like what? She couldn't believe it. I was trying to celebrate my city now that I'm a woman. What? Anyway how crazy would it have looked if she walked up there? They would have been like, Beyonce is jealous. She can't stand to see Jay-Z with another woman and here I am. Someone who's not in that state of mind, not thinking that way, just caught up in the moment. I look back and think, damn, she was right. I was tripping. Now Jay-Z and Alicia Keys both had something to say on the matter. To interrupt that moment for us, I don't think that was the right thing to do. It was a lot of planning that went into that performance. To disrupt that was out of line. We can appreciate her being overwhelmed and inspired, but we would have appreciated it if she would have did it from her seat. The funny thing about the whole situation is that Alicia Keys did not even know that Little Mama was on stage. She was too focused on putting on a good show and was only aware of Jay-Z on her right side. Alicia Keys was informed of the situation later on, and she only saw a clip of it when she got home. How mad was you at Little Mama when she fucked up your performance? <laughs> 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 all right. The truth, the truth, truth, truth. First of all, you know, it's... Because I had to watch it again, and let me just be honest with you. As me watching it again this morning, <laughs> it seemed like you didn't even see her. The truth of the all truth, the, the truth. The truth, okay. Jay seemed to, he was heated. He was in his face. All I know, uh -huh. he was on that stage. Jay was here. Mm -hmm. I was here. Mm -hmm. In my head, I was such a gorilla at the time. Mm -hmm. I was, my eyes, I was like, this is what's happening is I'm going to destroy this record tonight. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. all I had in my head. 
Somehow, however she got over here, I didn't even bear witness to the whole show. I was ice so focused on making it amazing. I went backstage and Jay was like, so you ain't, you ain't see that? <laughs> and I was like, what? And he was like, no, nah, you ain't just see what just happened? And I was like, yeah, we killed it. That's what just happened. <laughs> After numerous apologies on her part, both Alicia Keys and Jay-Z forgave Little Mama. However, Little Mama still received a lot of backlash online. And honestly, I think this was what tanked her career. According to rumors, many producers and musicians did not want to work with Little Mama after the incident. The thing is, at the time, Little Mama was not really a major star at this point. Despite her minor successes, she didn't have the fan base to withstand the onslaught of the Beehive as well as fans of the biggest rapper of all time. And that's not even getting into Alicia Keys. Well, I didn't really, I didn't really know what Jay said. I thought Jay was like, you know, okay, like, you know, I see you, like, enjoying the moment in it with me, like interacting, um, which was after I walked up and I'm kind of like bouncing, you know, as I'm watching, I'm watching this at home now, I'm watching myself um, on the internet. So I'm like bouncing and I'm coming towards Jay-Z and then he's like backing up. And my emotions at the time was like a, like a vibe, like, yeah, like you doing it, like New York, <laughs> like, I don't know, I just was feeling it, like, you know, uh -huh. I was definitely caught up in the moment. And, um, you know, he was backing up and when I got home, I realized, he said, oh, you're going to see pain it, huh? I realize it's now that I'm home. Right. Then he walked away. So now that I'm home, like, wow. Jay-Z wasn't feeling that. Jay-Z feels like I disrespected him as opposed to praising him. There are rumors that the incident made her suicidal, but once again, these have never been confirmed. Another reason why Little Mama departed the music scene was that she closely associated music with her mother. When her mom passed away, she buried herself in her work. She accomplished a lot during this time period. However, after a while, she could not ignore her grief any longer. Now around 2010, she released the non-charting singles, Doughboy and Hustler Girl. Sometimes I get high up to cope with reality. At the time, she was still teasing the release of her next album. However, it was never released. She then departed from Jive before it was disbanded. From this point on, none of her music ever made it big and she became an independent artist. Around 2011, she released some tracks directly online in the form of Strawberry, On and On and On, and NYNY LALA with Snoop Dogg. And these songs were supposed to appear on her next album. By around 2012, she was no longer a judge on America's Best Dance Crew and released just one track called As Bad As Me. Soon after this, she announced that she was no longer interested in making music and would be taking a hiatus. Around 2011, she began her acting career. She landed a lead role as Lisa Left Eye Lopez in the VH1 TLC biographical film Crazy Sexy Cool, The TLC Story. She performed so well in the film that the real TLC group actually wound up bringing her on tour and also allowed Mama to rap Left Eye's verses on the song. By around 2014, Little Mama was back making music again as she appeared on MC Light's album Legend on the track and in the music video of Ball. 2015 marked the beginning of her relationship with Big Sean and the minor returned to music with the songs Sausage and To Fly off her Take Me Back mixtape. Sausage was inspired by the movement on the vine of the same name. And when she released the music video on World Star, it immediately went viral, earning about 3 million views in its first week. Unfortunately, due to copyright issues, the song was not available for sale and did not officially chart. Another song that appeared on the mixtape was called Memes and was made in response to the memes that people made about her after she appeared in The Breakfast Club and Charlemagne made her cry. Now during the interview, Charlemagne held nothing back. He went in on Little Mama for absolutely no reason. He called her old looking, he brought up the VMA incident, and even brought up tensions between her and Nicki Minaj. Little Mama, you have a lot of confidence, Thank and that's you. a good thing. Thank you. But you have to actually, <laughs> no, too much. no seriously, you, right you actually have to accomplish a lot more before you come off as cocky as but you I do. But I didn't come off as cocky, I come off as confident, I believe in God. But you're an actual musician, you actually have 
I guess, some type of talent. Like, you did have yeah. a little buzz going at one Definitely point. Definitely have talent. And but what have you done lately, though? This is a, a what have you done for me what now type you, of industry. What have you done lately? I'm getting back into the music now. Okay, My so that's the plan. for itself. I don't, I'm not here to say what I'm going to do. Um, when I was 17 years old, I put out an album while my mother was dying <clears> of cancer. That right there alone is a struggle. That's hard. Right. That's tough for anybody. But my music will speak for itself. My actions will speak for itself. My mother will be proud. My father will be proud. At the end of the day. And nobody can stop me. Period. Although the female rappers never actually got into it, Nikki threw shade at Little Mama after Little Mama claimed she stole her style. That's petty. I feel like these women, Nicki Minaj, Little Kim, who else? Many of them. They are all 6 to 10 to 20 years my senior. I have so much time and space to grow that even if someone else is ignorant, let them be because once you pass 20, 30, you begin to get set in your ways. I can't teach older women how to be women. I can only teach the younger generation how to be women. Now back to the Charlemagne story. By 2016, she returned to the Breakfast Club once more to explain her side of the story. On a serious note, the reason why I got emotional is because I was talking about my mother. And at the time, I hadn't really come out about how I felt about it. I went through a phase where in that moment when I came to talk to y'all, that was the first time I ever sat down with a group of people and discussed it. Throughout 2016, Little Mama dropped more singles like Summer 16, 4 p.m. And a remix of Rihanna's work. And around 2016, she broke up with Big Sean. Throughout the year, she did brand endorsements for Empower, Body Care, Model Perpetual Farm, and Hebrew Brantley Clothing. And after this, she went on to acting, appearing in movies and TV shows, and landing a main cast role in season 2 of Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. By 2020, she established herself as a minor actor, appearing in True to the Game 2, Gina Story. And in 2021, she appeared in PT in the Dark, The Misunderstanding, Fruits of the Heart, True to the Game 3, and Hip Hop Family Christmas. Now around 2021, she reignited her beef with Charlemagne the God. Seemingly unprompted, she left a comment on an Instagram post featuring dialogue between Fat Joe and Charlemagne. The rappers were discussing the recent shooting of PNB Rock, and it's a bit unclear what exactly set Little Mama off. Charlemagne is a bitch ass too. Why? Because when I review the tapes and how he tried to trick me, a young black successful woman from the bottom out of my spot, he actually goes on the list with the cops, killers, feds, and other haters. Jealousy is a MF, and it be your own people. You gotta secure yourself though, Joe dropped a lot of gems. Hope y'all listening. Now the beef didn't really go anywhere. And aside from a 2021 single called Uh Huh. Which I was safe, I'm back with the bass. Hole in the ace, bitch I came to slay. She remained kind of off the map. And there you have it folks. That's the story of Little Mama. In 2022, Little Mama was very quiet. She was not focusing on her music and acting career. And she made a sudden appearance on Instagram around February of 2022. Her first appearance since 2019. She appears to have gotten married, although she does not confirm or deny these allegations. On Spotify, she has 850,000 monthly listeners, and her most listened to songs are Lip Gloss, Shawty Get Loose, Lip Gloss Again, G Slide, and Uh Oh, That's It For Me, It's Your Boy Ali. What happened to Little Mama in your opinion? Let me know down below. You what happened to video dropping soon. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.